Should DJs accept bookings during pandemic and be held accountable for the rising COVID-19 deaths? This is um, a question taken from Business Techno on um, Twitter, actually, but it made me think because of the events that have been popping up all over the place in Paris and in Mo some some events in Malta, a couple of in Italy, where some DJs have been heading out and playing in countries that have, you know, that have... Um, have a questionable control on uh, on the virus at the moment and um in general probably are painting a bad picture as to what the current state of affairs is globally or europe wide so on the question in terms of should a dj be responsible for the rising covid cases they go and play somewhere and you know yeah of course right if you go and play somewhere and the numbers are one way and then you leave and the numbers spike up and they can track and trace it to a certain area that you are playing in with the people that actually attended your event yeah you're bang to rights and the evidence is dead there's a paper troll you're obviously going to be responsible for it but i don't think it's fair when the djs are going to countries that have got some kind of control on the situation and who are actively telling promoters to try and put on events so that they can boost tourism and get some money in the bank right because that's what's basically happening a lot of governments are probably too quick to reopen the economy because they didn't really have an adequate plan in place to um support areas different sectors of, of business they didn't really put grants in place they didn't assist anyone it's all kind of left everybody up to their own devices and by the time they tried to figure out something it was too late there were too many businesses that were crumbling or on their knees and you know they can't be expected to give everybody a grant or to bail out every single company so they're having to pick and choose so if they can get some kind of control on it minimize the risk uh bring the number of cases down number of deaths down I don't really think it's a bad thing to try and tell people up different sectors of your industry, especially regarding tourism, whether it's hospitality, whether it's bars and clubs, to say, hey, you can put on an event, make sure it kind of follows this protocol that we kind of know works at the moment. And, you know, whatever it may be, track and trace, uh, social distancing, blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, just so that we can make sure we don't tank as an economy. And, that's the most that they can do and then of course it's up to the promoter as well because i think there's a lot there's too much owners put on the dj i think as well it's a it's a twofold isn't it there has to be yeah it's twofold i remember because when i was promoting i always kind of like to go out of my way to make the DJ, djs feel comfortable because i'm a dj myself i know how it feels to go into a club where you're playing and not see the promoter for like 20 minutes as you arrive not know what time you're actually gonna play because the person before you has kind of gone over time not have not know if you need to buy your drink tokens and expense it and do not know if you need to buy your drinks and expense it or you're gonna get tokens or you're gonna have to use the person to go up and get drinks all the time you know all that sort of unknowing thing is can be annoying so I know when I put on events, I tried to go out my way to make the promoters feel comfortable by basically taking away any responsibility from them that they don't need to have. They're only there to play music, right? I've hired you, I booked you because you're a person that I kind of vibe with, that I like, that I'm a big fan of, and I think you're gonna resonate with my crowd. So you come, you play, I pay you, you go home happy, boom, Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt. I don't think they should be responsible for flipping, you know, um, influencing policy or advocating for, you know, safer, dance, safer, what, uh, safer health standards, whatever. That should be, the owner should be placed primarily to the promoter's feet and also to the country that he's in, right? If it's legal, quote unquote, to do it, then do it. But I guess with pandemic, the interesting or the kind of dubious part of it, the weird part of it is that it's more so about a civic duty, right? It's more so about um, morally, what does that look like and how, what kind of greater good does it serve to have people partying and celebrating and, you know, dancing around um, in a fashion that wouldn't lead you to believe that some, somehow it's okay to go out and do that stuff when it isn't at the moment in most places, it, apart from, you know, a select few countries, most places haven't returned back to normal at all. They've got, you know, varying levels of normality, but normal, normal isn't going to be back onto a vaccine but i think we're all kind of aware of that right we know that we've all accepted it i think i've said on this podcast a few times your 2020 is done like don't you know don't get your hopes up about 2020 being re rescued i remember that we had this big campaign in the uk with the government about oh we want to save your summer save your summer the summer's over it's finished it was over in march right you should just you know bin it whatever you can rectify whatever you can salvage from this situation whether it's going to a trip somewhere you know to you know to the countryside or going to a seaside somewhere in bournemouth or hastings whatever maybe you do that and and enjoy yourself but don't think you're going to rescue the summer and be able to go to you know um i don't know uh southeast asia and 
do back backpacking or go to South America and do your backpack thing. That's not going to happen. Do your, you know, do, um, put your plans up for next year. But yeah, I guess a civic person, civic responsibility is probably the thing in there. So this kind of comes to the point or comes to head because I guess um, Amelia Lenz, a DJ who's kind of, I guess she has an interesting reputation. And not reputation. She has she has an interesting um. The opinion on someone like her is definitely split. It feels like within the in the, within the scene in general, right? Me personally, I'm not really a fan of her DJing skills. I think she's pretty mediocre. Um, I think that approach of just playing bangers back to back isn't necessarily for me. But I also appreciate her position in the scene. I also think there's an aspect of her that's more so. You know, I don't think you become as successful as she has if you're not that attractive right it is what it is it kind of gives you a bit of a boost uh the fact that she's a former model kind of helps her out as well but for the most part she you know she does her job she kind of uses her platform to the best of her ability but she seems to occupy that business techno end of things that isn't necessarily something that i'm very much interested in i think a lot of people are very much del not deluded but they're a bit naive as to expect somebody like a, a Amelia lens a peggy goo a shot the wit these are like really big festival stage you know standing next to a porsche nike sponsor djs to have some kind of um you know uh, to have some kind of or not even altruistic to have some kind of um view holistic view about how they view the scene it's not going to happen right for them they've kind of come into it i kind of said it before about maybe a peggy that i always kind of feel like their influences first dj second right which is not a bad thing i think we have got to a point now in the scene where if you want to be i'd imagine anyone that's got some kind of social media following has a bit of clout on social and they segue into djing they become very successful especially if they commit to it and they get into like record digging they get into producing they actually link up with certain promoters they release stuff on certain labels you could probably get really far because at the end of the day clubs want to sell tickets right like a lump if you're a purist and you can't sell tickets it is what it is isn't it you're not going to get booked in the big places people need to sell tickets to justify paying the rent or to, to basically keep the lights on isn't it so i understand her position in the scene but i'm also kind of not surprised when somebody like an Amelia lens is quick to go and play somewhere so the situation at hand is that she went to go play at this party um party promotion or this collective in paris called possession they put on a lot of really cool events all around paris usually around the suburbs it feels like loads of um kind of warehouse spaces open air events now because obviously with the pandemic they do stuff really um you know underground in that respect no addresses you have to sign up it gets text to you or you call a number you know kind of reminiscent of the old school rave day so i really um a really cool approach right you can see the people that are actually putting it together are actually fans of the culture they're fans of the music um and they're sort of geeking out and being able to book some of their friends or some of the people they look up to uh to play in their city right and paris as well you, when you think of paris you don't think of techno you don't think of underground music so for paris to have this resurgence is really cool to see all right but i guess if you're a fan of Amelia lens or you're or you're kind of very conscious of what's happening in society you would probably get feel a bit away seeing these videos of Amelia lens playing in this kind of you know packed place that's open air don't get me wrong but people clearly not socially distancing and just having a whale of a time now you could be a bit jealous like i am because i'd obviously love to go and rave again but there is a part of you that's a bit like this isn't probably the best way that we should be going about things this is not probably the best message to be sending out to people actually that you know things are back to normal because they clearly aren't this is a video as well that popped up from my instagram that i'm gonna play for you now if you're just listening <laughs> She's playing here in front of a packed audience, it looks like, right? They're really far, they're really close to to the stage. There's no distancing there. Everyone's got their phones out recording. Some people have masks on, most people don't. And they're just raving in an open air place somewhere that looks bloody beautiful, to be fair, right? Dedicated to all the ravers in the Next one. I hate the hands. I hate the hands. I hate all that. I hate it. I, I know you have to be some kind. You have to. There is, there is a little bit of performance, a bit of theater that comes with DJing, right? You got someone like one of my favorites, like a Ricardo Villa Lobos and stuff, and he's effortlessly cool and always kind of twirling around. But I hate this kind of like. 
I, I don't know, man. There's something about it. It's just so cringe, right? But hey, again, if you want to break your quarant, you want to break your quarantine, or you want to break a uh, <laughs> protocol and go and see Emily play in a, you know, in an open air event, then credit to you. But this is not the vibe. But hey, it looks like fun. <laughs> It's like nothing interesting about what she plays and it's just all the same like it's just like you can just go and beat Paul and pick the top 20 hits and just sling them on oh that sounds good i like that sound and what a horrible cr the, the, look the people behind the stage look like they're having more fun than people are actually in front of which is ironic which no which is funny because it's the actually opposite when you see those videos of people playing in like i don't know in italy somewhere it seems like the people behind the booth are always like bougie and vip-ish and acting aloof and oh look we're cool because we're standing next to the dj and the people in the crowd are usually the ones that are going crazy trying to get the attention of people behind the deck so it's interesting flip People got their mask on their chin, or mask over their eyes, topless, perspirating. Ooh, perfect COVID conditions. And then what's the one? Then what's the other one here? It's not for me you have to be a certain person to be going to so yeah she's getting a lot of stick for that i guess online um mostly i guess again usually with this cancel stuff because people don't like her anyway right people think that she's undeserving of a spot she's not talented she's annoying blah blah i don't know whatever it is right but the bigger question is that would you do it hmm. i guess if you're that it's interesting because there's an interesting argument against it because you know if you're somebody on her level or somebody of that level there's probably an argument to be had that you probably don't need to play again and again, we're not counting people's, we don't know how people handle their finances, you know, counting people's pockets is a bit cuck. But let's imagine, for instance, that she's getting paid, like, I don't know, anywhere between 10 to 30 grand per gig or something, right? Or anywhere between 5 to 20. Let's be, you know, let's be kind of, um, let's dumb down that valuation a little bit. That's a lot, right? Most of these people are playing, what, four times, maybe five times per week, right? Um, in different places um you know traveling the world mostly sometimes europe most of well, most of europe and sometimes the world that's a lot of coin you're picking up you're easily if you're if you're doing a really if you're kind of um promoting an ep or you're on tour you could probably clear 100 grand in a month like pretty easily right um this is without you know agent fees and all that sort of stuff and booking managers but you could easily clear 100 grand so to imagine that these people are number one either so desperate to play that they'll just go and do it regardless of how much money they have in the bank because they don't need to actually leave their home right i guess that's the argument we have at the moment with a lot of people who uh, have the privilege of being able to work from home because they have a job that allows you to do so most people you know some people i guess the large majority of the workforce have to be out there stacking our shelves delivering our mail delivering our amazon packages they can't work from home right doesn't you know their job doesn't allow them to do so but if you have the ability to work from home you should probably be doing it right and trying your best to mitigate you spreading um the virus especially you know because a lot of people say oh you feel right if you get tested best yeah you get tested but there's no um there's no telling who you might pass it on to during the time that you have especially if you break quarantine so there's an argument to be had that she shouldn't be going because she has a lot of money in the bank and you know you should be able to stay at home and just go out when the time is warranted right and um but then on the other hand of it who are we to tell somebody who's essentially devoted their entire life to pursuing this goal of becoming a professional DJ, a touring DJ, somebody that people want to see, which isn't which isn't easy, right? I think people need to kind of get that through their heads. Like becoming a successful DJ is really difficult. Trust me, I'm still trying to do so, right? Um, and the issue is that, of course, I always say that I think DJing is probably the, the lowest con the, the lowest bar of entry in the kind of music world i guess performing wise apart from maybe hitting a, a, a triangle or banging on a tambourine it's the easiest thing to kind of do and to learn how to get better or it's the easiest thing to do and it's also the easiest thing to master i guess in a short period of time so there's just too many djs out there with not enough gigs to go around so for you to beat the odds and become successful especially as a female now don't get me wrong she's a you know former model um that obviously helps because it feels like there's a certain segment of that 
that business techno that just is all about the looks when it comes to ladies. It's just no coincidence that all the most of the business techno ladies happen to be fairly attractive. It, there's no coincidence, right? Like objectively, it looks like it. They have a particular kind of, you know, they have a particular vibe of person they kind of go for. Maybe Shardway is anyone that sort of like breaks a mold because she's kind of a bit, you know, she has that kind of a dirty hipster look. But for the most part, everyone's quite attractive. You know, if you put them a bit, do them, do them up with a bit of makeup, put them in some, um, some fancy clothes, and they look stunning on a night out. So. For her to beat the odds and be that person, because I'm sure there's a lot of former models trying to, you know, get some, do the whole DJ Griff, for her to kind of do it and actually have it as a career, you know, is to be commended. So for her to then sit at home for six months and not do the thing that you love, the thing that you've, that's given you an identity, the thing that's kind of given you hope, the thing that's allowed you to travel the world, it can be difficult. So when a promotion like Possession comes up and says, hey, do you want to play for us, um, you know, during this time and you feel like you can maybe um, give people an escape? Because that's what's happened too, because I think there's a lot of, I saw a story the other day about Disneyland, Paris, sorry, Disneyland, um, Florida, I think, and people in America were kind of bemused as to why anyone will go to Disney land um during the pandemic right and a lot of people that they were interviewing were basically saying that hey this is legitimately prior to covid or prior to the pandemic disneyland was their kind of escape from the kind of craziness that's going on in the world the chance to kind of unwind to unplug and to kind of reminisce about a time when it, things were far simpler when you were younger right like you're kind of seeing all these old um disney cartoons popping up all over the place lots of different characters that you remember you obviously have the experience of connecting with your child or with a child you're taking there it's a really from what i read in, reading the, uh, the article it made a lot more sense to me why someone would go now i wouldn't go in my position but i understand why i don't need to so i think a lot of those people that are partying now they kind of feel the same and especially young people who have been effectively because that's the thing if you think about it. imagine if you graduated this year right like legitimately your career prospects were looking on the up you had some things sorted out you kind of had some internships lined up and then now this happens right there's a, there is a kind of point there is probably something in you that's just like you know what i just need the time to just unwind and just let loose and forget about how crappy my life is going to be for the next what five years maybe two if you're lucky right especially off the back end of dealing with this pandemic so i understand the desire for so young people to be like look i don't want to be at home constantly reminded about the horrors that are happening in the world i want to just enjoy myself for one night so maybe that's something that they can do but i think it's probably irresponsible for me to be posting them on a profile page probably that's not the best thing but you know we live in a narcissistic world at the moment where if you have social media and you're doing something like this with that kind of crowd you have to post it in it you because you feel like if you don't post it, it didn't happen um but then there's also a part of me that thinks a lot of the stick that she's getting for this is a tad unwarranted because there were a lot of other people that played at this thing right um there was what the guy called um had one there was um, a slow-mo dude played as well. I think I've got a video here from them, right? Playing is a clip of some guy here with a face shield, which I actually have. I actually worn mine, but this is my face shield. See? I need to actually get that on there, right? My little face shield. But there's, yeah, so a lot of other people were playing, but she seems to be getting all the hate online for some reason. I guess people don't like her. It's a video of Morning, Morning. Morning. like my prick. See a dog. You look sick. Morning, Robbie. No need to breathe. Now you're worried. You should leave. From my place. Oh. Bloody miss a good rave. And then, yeah, some other dude playing again. See? It wasn't only her, really. All the way to the morning. God damn it. it looks like fun though, to be fair, doesn't it? So yeah, wasn't only her. Look at that crowd. Imagine if you imagine if you hear about the spike star. Oh, how bad will you feel? And then lastly, there's her playing there. Standing ovation, it feels like clapping. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't only her, man. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of other people. And I think there was a, what? There was a rave they did last, was it last week? A couple of weeks ago? I'm going to say. And I, funnily enough, I think I actually mentioned here my notes. Funnily enough, a lot of the people that were playing in their previous parties were mostly female too. Mostly women, women, um, 
which is interesting because I would I'm really interested to see what the reception would have been like if it happened to be Marco Carolla, Adam Bayer, um, Chris Liebling, all these sort of like you know um, dusty white dudes in techno that everyone seems to hate. Imagine uh, Richie Horton and stuff. No, Richie Horton's a legend. I know, just never call him dusty, but you know that kind of crew. Mateus Caden, um, you know Mateus Tanzem. Imagine if those kind of guys were playing. <sighs> the the ritual they would have got because they would the people already think they're taking up room in the scene and they should allow other people in other voices so imagine what they would have said with that right um this has actually had one talking about it here saying oh my god what a blast that back-to-back -back surprise is viper diva with my partner in crime shlomo tampion was crazy you can also check amelie lens enjoying our set and the third video thank you my possession family in paris hope you do this soon again so <laughs> Seems fun. Being cool, smoking behind the decks with a cigarette and stuff, having you know, doing the thing. And then the other people that played, this lady called Ani and Antia. She was vibing last weekend, yeah, or a couple of weeks ago. No one said nothing, and then you got another lady called Felice. Felici? Felici? And then again. Looks good picture though, doesn't it? And then you've got who else is that? Yo, oh, Ellen Alien played. But don't you, again, this is only for the videos, right? Don't get me wrong. This and then and lastly, VT, VTS. Smashing it. But is it me or don't you feel like the videos are a little bit, the people in them, there's a little bit of hesitation, a little bit of trepidation, a little bit of um, uncertainty in the air. People aren't going as crazy as they probably should if they're in a rave. So that part of me thinks, imagine how much better these parties will be once everything is sorted and settled down. I, you know, I'm itching to go out, right? I'm I'm the person that will travel, you know, to random places at Burkhan on my own just to go see my favorite people play, you know, go to random nights all over the UK to go see people play that I love. Um, listen to mixes, you know, for seven hours in a row and stuff. I'm I gagging to go out, don't get me wrong, but... There's a part of me that thinks it's going to be far better experience when things settle down and people are actually feel a lot more safer in that kind of environment. The release and the jubilation that you will have in that environment is going to be out of this world, out of this world. Just imagine, just imagine what that's going to be like once everything's settled down. So I don't know. I think in conclusion, if people want to go, if, 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 if the country that the promoters are in have deemed it to be safe enough to host these events and they're, actively asking the promoters to put them on so that they can um, boost the economy and provide jobs and also provide a welcome relief to this horror situation we're going for cool if it's dj especially if you're Emily lens i guess it's you know it, it kind of paints in the wrong light because she is somebody that is quite vocal about animal cruelty and veganism and stuff so for her to be so conscientious about the welfare of animals but then be so dismissive about the impact that it could have by put but the impact that she could have by playing at a packed party like that you know there's a little bit of hypocrisy there but i guess we all have a bit of hypocrisy within us and i guess for the people that aren't fans of it and don't want to go and think it's all ridiculous you know just stay at home innit, and let the people do their thing what we what can we do really i think what's proven especially with the pandemic is like no amount of shaming no amount of shouting no amount of lecturing people who don't think it's that serious who don't think it's as it's as serious as you think it is is ever going to change their mind we've seen too many videos of people getting into arguments fisty cuffs you know people have been stabbed over this sort of stuff right ran over um it doesn't work that way they're never going to listen to you berating them they're not going to listen to you in general because they made up their mind that they would rather go out and party with their friends than staying at home because they just want to do that there's no rhyme or reason why they're doing that they just prefer to do that i think it's okay let adults make their own decisions and i think if you're not a fan of it then you just stay indoors and advise your friends not to do 
do so and make sure you keep your family and friends safe really i think that's the best way to go about things i don't think we're ever gonna convince a crowd that want to go out at all costs you know, like i said before i think if you want to break your if you want to if the first rave you want to go to is go see Emily lens then you know we have to question your taste in music to begin with <clears throat> And also, we have to just be respectful that you might be a legit fan of hers. You might be her diehard. You might be the person that's actually keeping her lights on, which is great, right? And I'm sure she's very thankful for seeing her fans up close and personal, especially if she's legitimately spent all that time alone. But I've always been suspicious. I've always think I'm aware or I'm kind of, I've got knowledge of there's been a, people been going out regularly anyway in general in places you know and just keeping it storm and not posting on social but the people that have obsessed with kind of the image they're obsessed with letting everybody know where they play they're obsessed with doing that post that everyone's doing at the moment oh it's six months before playing do you know what I mean oh it's been we all know how long no one's been out do you know what I mean like no need to keep telling us and reminding us but hey what do I know man what do I know let me know your comments down below let me know what you think did a mini lens fuck up by going to play in paris what our possession um the party collective our data blame um did they do anything wrong to begin with would you go to it if you were in the city let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts